The other remaining duties of the presidency, we've talked about chief executive officer like the king, we've talked about commander in chief like the king, we've talked about ceremonial head of state like the king. The president has many, many similarities to a royal personage. But the president is also the head of the political party uh, and therefore is a politician. So he is the chief of the party and what the book calls a super politician. And what a super politician is, is basically the leading Republican or Democrat of his time. So when Barack Obama was president of the United States, he was not just the president, he was the leading Democrat. And he wanted strength and power to continue to flow to the Democratic Party. President Trump is the leading Republican, and he wants strength and power to continue to flow to the Republican Party. And this switch back and forth has been going on since the Republicans and Democrats first met in uh, opposition to one another in 1856. Before that, uh, instead of the Republican Party, there was a Whig Party, W-H-I-G. And uh, they, they would uh, fight against the Democrats. And then before that, we had one party and only one party, the Democratic Republicans. It was the era of good feeling. Where everyone agreed. Well, that's what the history books say. It's not quite that simple. Before that, there was the Democratic Republican Party versus the Federalist Party. So uh, Democrats trace their lineage to the beginnings of the Republic, to Thomas Jefferson and the Democratic Republicans that win the election of 1800. Republicans trace their lineage to Abraham Lincoln, uh, who was the first Republican president elected in 1860. But Republicans also inherit some things, some, from the Whigs and the Federalists before them, but only some. They're not the same. So, the president, on top of everything else, is the chief politician of his party. He is the leading Republican now. He was the leading Democrat and going back and forth. Now, these many roles are what can trip up people when they think about the presidency or when they try to be president. Because it's very important to know what situation you're in and what hat you're wearing. When you're the ceremonial head of state, people are going to treat you with deep deference and even great reverence. Almost as if you're holy. You're not holy. Like in the old Roman triumphs, there's a slave beside you on the chariot as the entire city is cheering for you. The slave whispers in your ear, remember you are mortal. Remember you are mortal. All glory is fleeting. All glory is fleeting. So it's important for a president and the people around the president not to actually believe that somehow they have undergone an apotheosis which turns their mere mortal selves into something semi-divine, like a god, a Greco-Roman god. Now, when you wear the mantle of ceremonial head of state, you will be treated a certain way. Don't start believing in it. In wartime, as commander-in-chief, the president has terrifying power. In a state of emergency, the president has terrifying power. I say terrifying because no one should be trusted with that kind of power for very long. States of emergency, even wars, quickly become a matter for the Congress and the president and the courts to negotiate over. But in the first flush of an emergency, or especially in the early stages of a war, like right after 9-11-2001, or right, right after December 7th, 1941, 9-11 being the terror attack that destroyed the World Trade Center, killing 3,000 plus civilians, uh, December 7th, 41 being the Pearl Harbor attack, where the Japanese Empire kills over 3,000 servicemen and civilians in Hawaii, during a period right after that, the president is the person who is the fulcrum of every bit of federal power. And their choices are going to shape things for the rest of the crisis, for the rest of the war. It is expected that that period 
is going to be finite and limited. And once the emergency passes or once people figure out how the war is going to work, at that point the Congress and the courts take a greater role. The president is stepping back from a role that's a lot like a Roman dictator. When you are a president who has gone through this and who has been the decision maker for the republic during a time when your decisions really shape the fate of hundreds of millions of people or billions of people around the world, it can be difficult to step back and become just a plain old politician again. As with the ceremonial head of state, a president who is a wartime president can, for the best of intentions, with the best of intentions, and for the best of reasons, get used to having that kind of responsibility and that kind of power. And if they get too used to it, they stop acting like a politician, a president, or a servant of the people, and they start behaving more and more like a king or an emperor, which is something that has happened in the past. And it is always disturbing and scary. So, it is important also, when you're being a politician, to remember that there's time for politics and there's time to serve the whole country. There are times when you want to put your party first and there are times when you need to put the country first. Right now, we're facing a global pandemic brought to us by the Communist Party of China. I have to point that out because during the first two and a half months, they covered it up and did nothing and allowed the disease to spread. That responsibility is worth saying over and over again, and I will continue to do so because they are culpable for this. They could have stopped it. They chose to cover it up. Why? Because power. But we're now facing a global pandemic. The American government is trying to struggle uh, as to how to help people as the economy shakes and shudders, as everything that can be shut down is shut down for at least a while in order to interrupt the transmission of this disease. This is a time, like after 9-11's terrorist attacks, like after the sneak attack on Pearl Harbor, this is a time when people in government should be less politician and more statesman. They should be more about what the country needs, not what the party wants. And some of our leaders are having difficulty with that. Look it up yourself. See who it is that you think is playing this politically and you think who is trying to serve the country impartially in a time of need. Come to your own conclusion. That's important. That's one of your duties as a citizen, to pay attention to things and to come to your own conclusions about them and to be honest in the process of doing so. When you become too used to being a politician, it can be hard for you to become the ceremonial head of state without introducing politics into it. It can be hard for you to be a chief executive or commander-in-chief, especially during a crisis, if you are used to being hyper-partisan, Democrat versus Republican, donkey versus elephant. Uh-uh. Politicians who are presidents, senators, and congressmen, it's not the time for donkeys versus elephants. It really, really, really is a time when we are supposed to come together and remember something that's kind of important. In a crisis like this, it pays to remember that we Americans have more in common than anything that divides us. That what unifies us is more important than any partisan difference. As Lincoln once said, a house divided against itself cannot stand. In a crisis like this, I hope and I ultimately do believe that our politicians will come together and stop acting like politicians for the duration of the crisis 
and start being statesmen who care more about the country than they do about winning the next election or scoring political points against their political opponents. That's my hope and my belief. But where executive power can become a problem is when these roles get confused. <clears throat> when a president gets used to having emergency or war powers and they need to step back and stop from that, stop doing that, they may habitually just continue to hose their power around like they're an Olympian god. Not a good idea. They can overreach and they can violate the constitutional balance of powers between the presidency, the legislature, and the judiciary. If a person, on the other hand, is used to being treated with the deference of a uh, ceremonial head of state, they could take it personally when people f basically start punching at them verbally in a, political in a political debate, which is what politicians are supposed to engage in from time to time. So know your role is really important here. And presidents who have difficulty stepping gracefully from one role to the other end up in crises, in abuses of power. They end up facing, uh, from Article 1, Sections 2, 3, and 4, questions of did they commit high crimes and misdemeanors, um, and going through the political process of impeachment. Or they could face scandals, or they could be a failed president. We're going to talk about some of them next week or after vacation. So uh, there are some lectures about the uh, characteristics of the American presidency. For the comments on this one, I want you to think about the different roles of the president and how it might be difficult for a person to navigate between all those differences. You might even bring up presidents who had trouble with this in the past. And be fair with your reasoning. Don't be a hyper-partisan yourself. You can have a point of view and express it, and that's fine. But be fair in the way you apply reason. Uh, be fair in defending your point of view. Uh, thank you for your time and for your attention on these presidential lectures.